So I wanted to set up my computer that I can see here, what you can see here, but now it's put like these windows next to each other, which was completely unintentional. I, I couldn't replicate it if I tried to, but it actually works. Like this is quite useful. Like can you all see this? Is this, can I just leave it as is? Because if I have to change the layout again, I don't know what's going to happen. Okay. I, don't, I have like 10 minutes or something. Is that correct? For Okay, for, for one million slides, so I'm just going to blaze right through. I'm just sort of going to try and decide on the fly what's more or less interesting. Um, Pybombs and Seagran, um, and this, the point of this presentation, like the idea of like the layout is, like this should be the most low level presentation. So if some liberal arts students walk into here, they should be able to follow this and then be able to install Green Radio, it should be all good. And um, I, got, I wanted to leave no one behind in this particular presentation. So and if you feel that I am, then just say something and we can slow down or speed up. So um, I'm going to make no assumptions. Like you heard about GRC and it's all great, but like what about if you have no idea how to get this stuff running? I mean, as in, you know, like absolutely no clue. You have your, your laptop and you see what we're doing on the side. You don't know how to get from one to the other. That's where I come in and explain how to do these things. Okay. There's four primary ways to install Gun Radio. Try it. Better. We've already talked about them. The GNU Radio Live DVD is the easiest because you have to do nothing. You just boot from a DVD. And then for most distros, uh, Linux distros, you can do something like this, app get install GNU Radio. Um, it'll give you a working GNU Radio. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, the only reason I, I think this is slightly, like this is number two and not number one, is because this will actually modify your computer, right? Number three, Pi Bombs, about which I'm going to talk about. And then number four is you just build from source. If you know how to do that, you don't have to be here today. You can go check out Boulder. It's, it's really nice. Um, but also, you can't ask us questions. If you don't know how to do source build, you shouldn't be doing source build. But if you do, then you're not, then again, you're, like, you're in the wrong place. Doesn't matter. Let's talk about Pybox. What do you need? Any laptop that runs Mac or Linux. And then one day in the future, we'll also be able to run Windows. But Windows is always complicated. Um, and we'll get there, I don't know, just as soon as someone volunteers to write the code, basically, we'll get there. Um, but like, I've, like, I know that all of these distributions work, and so does Mac, um, so that's quite a wide variety. You need a working Python, and what else do you need? That's it. You really don't need anything else to get started. Um, and these are sort of the most important steps. So you could actually follow this along if you like. So you can go to your, your command line, and type pip install pybombs, and there's also a GUI for this, which you can try. It's still sort of an alpha, but um, it, it's getting there. Then you run some magic commands, which are on the manual. I'm going to skip them for now because I want to I want to get out, want to get along in this presentation. And now you now you you run a single command to install Gnu Radio and all dependencies, latest version, and that's that's the command. You just type it in, boom, and then you wait 45 minutes to an hour, and you have it all. That's it. Okay. Any questions? No, I'm kidding. There's more in this presentation, but um, also you might be thinking, whoa, 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 what's going on? Like, slow down. Um, so I'm going to talk about some Pybombs concepts here. So first of all, um, we keep talking about prefixes. Like, you, you see people on the mailing list say, oh, well, you should just install it into a custom prefix. And what does that even mean? Now, um, if you go back in time, you'll find that, is there actually a laser thing in here? No, there's not. What does it do? OK. Oh. So if you go back in time, you will see, is this one? Can I? Ah, there we go. So on, on Unix systems, like you typically install into user or user local. So if you do app get install, it goes here. If you compile by hand, it goes here. That's sort of the standard. And that works. Like since like, I don't know when, um, that's how it's worked. Like you get your Ubuntu, you do that, it'll, it'll just work out of the box. But a bunch of problems, first of all, um, there's no standard way to uninstall this. If you, if you copy it th there by hand, usually you have to remove it by hand as well. That is not true if you do app get install, but if you did like r random source builds, then that's, that's the problem you'll, you'll run into. Obviously, you can only install one thing at a time, of this, like for example, one version of GNU Radio. Maybe you need admin privileges that you maybe don't have. So, um, this directory is called the prefix. When we say install into a custom prefix, we just say, just pick any other directory, one that where you have write access to, maybe in your home directory. And that's what we call the prefix. So we just copy it somewhere else. Why not? Like, this is my home directory. I, I can write whatever I want in here. So I'm just going to compile, install it all there. 
all of these problems are solved by this solution. Of course, no, no other user on my system can use that, but that might actually be a, a benefit. The only problem is we now need to tell the operating system that, by the way, there's libraries and binaries in this directory. So we need to set some environment variables. If you don't know what envir environment variables are, that's actually fine. I'll, I'll cover that to some extent. So here's the command again, only it's sort of each sub, sub component on its own line. So we type pybombs, okay, that's the command, we get that. Prefix init, so that's sort of a sub command. So it's like when you do git pull or app get install, so this is, this is that. And um, then we have some options. We give it an alias. So this prefix, I'm gonna give an alias, so pybombs can reference it more easy in the future. And then I also specify a recipe called generator default, which is gonna get applied to this directory. So, basically I'm saying, pybombs, please create this directory, make it a full prefix, including GNU Radio and everything I need to run GNU Radio, call it default so I can reference that in the future, okay? That's it. Now this thing, as I mentioned, is called a recipe. I wanna talk about those real quick. So, um, I said earlier, I wanna, like there's some magic commands you need to run. Those are the magic commands. When you install Pybombs, it has some basic recipes, but it doesn't actually have a good radio recipe by default because we don't want to hard code stuff like that into the Pybombs code. So you have to install um, all these recipes. And there's two <coughs> main repositories that we provide, we being the good radio community, which are called GR recipes and GR etc. And sort of the general distinction is like, this is sort of like anything goes, and this is stuff that we've vetted a little bit. Um, if it's on the live DVD, that's, then it's gonna be here. If it's some important dependency, it's also gonna be there. Most people only need this, and then uh, you will have all the recipes. So let's look at one of those. I need to do some acrobatics again, trying to figure out where I have that. Can I drag this over? Oh yeah, there we go. So here's my browser window, and GRRecipes is it's on GitHub, so I'm on GitHub here. I just went to one, one of those, gr-paint.lwr, and this is the entire file. It's in YAML format because we like YAML. Sebastian mentioned it. You can see it's a couple of lines that sort of describe the package, and basically, like the most important ones are the source code comes from here, this is the description, and it depends on GNU Radio. And Pybombs, when it sees that, knows, oh, okay, that's fine. I download this, it's a git thing, so I need to clone it, that's fine. It's a CMake thing, so I just run CMake, I don't know, whatever, build, build, build. You don't have to care about that. And I, before I do any of that, I have to make sure the GNU Radio is installed. Boom, That's that, it's that easy. Put this out of the way. Um, I think I skipped the slide. Oh, okay, so how do I actually install something? So that's it, I type this command. So I'm just gonna do this right here. I'm gonna do actually see the screen from here. Is, is that correct? So I'm gonna do pybombs install gr-paint, what I showed you earlier. So of course, I don't know if I'm still on the Wi-Fi, because that's a, oh no, I am, okay. So yeah, cloning, configuring, building, and you can see it's sort of hiding the details. If you wanna see the details, there's a switch for you to do that, but if you need to install lots and lots of packages, you just wanna get the update. There we are, paint. Okay, so how do I run this? And that's the next um, funky, this is sort of the one thing that is slightly difficult about Pybombs because as I said earlier, we're sort of installing stuff into a non-standard place. So, um, and as a matter of fact, I can show you this place. Here we go. Prefix um, default is what I called it. So take, take a quick look. You can see there's a source directory. Source is where all the stuff is. And you can see there's the GR paint is now in there somewhere. I can't, I can't read it from here. I think this is it. Um, and there's this file, setup env.sh, which sets the environment variables. So this is something you can automate, but I wanna show it to you real quick in sort of the full detail, so you have to run this command. Okay, that's, that's the full detail. But now, um, what I've done is I've enabled this specific prefix in this session. Now I can do something like pybombs prefix info, and you will see there's a whole bunch of these. So I have a default one, I have an E300 one for my embedded stuff, I have an RFNOC devil one for my RFNOC stuff. Uh, this one is sort of on the side if I wanna use Pybombs to install actually to my system, but I never, never do that. Now if I type GNU Radio Companion here, GNU Radio Companion, it already knows which one to load. 
So, oh, I should have done that beforehand, then you would have seen how the, the paint blocks now appear. Um, is it called paint? Yeah, there we go. So there we are, that's, I, that's what I just installed. It's already there, I can immediately drop down the blocks. Um, you know, no special anything required. Let's close that again. And it's a shame you can't see that right now, but it's very easy to, um, um, in, in, like I have it in my, in my start menu, which is on this screen, unfortunately, but I can just like click a button as well and it'll run the GNU Radio Companion for that specific prefix. What I'm talking about, um, graphical stuff, let me just quickly run pi bombs GUI. So just so you know how it, how it looks like, this is what it looks like. Um, I select my prefix, there we go. What? No, that's not what I wanted. I wanted to choose prefix. Default, there we go, it's default, it's selected. And you can see this is all the stuff that I, ha that I have installed or not installed. So for example, um, ASPy is installed, whatever that is, but then GQRX is not. And I can sort of right click this, mark install, and then if you, if you prefer GUIs, that's, that's nice, then you can just use this. It looks a lot like Synaptic, which is not a coincidence. Um, I prefer the command line, so I'm going to go back to that. So huh, two minutes, okay. I um, already said all this, so there we go. Um, I'm gonna skip the, the nifty tricks because I don't have time. But um, all those things that I just showed, like GR Paint, where do they actually come from? Well, they come from Seagran, which um, Jonathan Corgan showed earlier, which is our fantastic website, which um, I don't want to claim credit for. Um, I think Nathan did most of the work. It looks like this. And you can find all these fancy blocks. I can click on one at random, GR Osmo SCR. It has a nice explanation, um, even pictures. These pictures load a bit slowly because they're hosted on the Osmo.com website. Um, one thing that we've added in code, but it's not uploaded yet, is a, um, a protocol handler so that I can like, click a button here, boom, and it'll immediately load either the GUI or the command line Python to install your stuff. So you don't even have to w worry about, about those things anymore. Um, it's, uh, unfortunately, it's not yet on here. One thing you might ask, though, is first of all, if I want to write one of these things, like how easy is it? And the answer is very easy. We have a... Um, uh, the guided tutorials, which will very, this, these are well curated tutorials which will um, explain the entire process. And then how do you get them onto CGRAN um, is also very easy and the main component is a file called manifest, here we are, which you need to include, um, uh, okay, it gets, okay, that's annoying, it, like GitHub is marking it up, but this is sort of a, a quick YAML file that sort of describes the, the, uh, the repository. And then CGRAN just passes that out and puts it on the website. So CGRAN.org is automatically um, sourced from, from various um, sources. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so um, there we go. If you want to know what we have, okay, CGRAN, I'm already I'm getting ahead of myself here. Um, if you want to build your own out of three modules, there's definitely a, you need to use GR module. I mean, you don't have to, but it just saves you time. There's no downside. It's explained here. And um, I, I just want to drive this home. Please use PyBombs if you don't want to use source build or any other. Like you can, there's other methods, but we tr we're trying to consolidate on a single one here for the GNU Radio community. So we have like a single set of answers that are valid for everyone. And um, we think it's pretty good and it's easy to add stuff, so please do that. Okay, I have this FAQ which I can't read out now, like because I'm done. Um, but I just wanted to repeat this. PyBombs is great. We think it's good, like even if you're a sysadmin, like because it does stuff for you. Also, if you're not a sysadmin, and um, go check out PyBombs and Seagrand, and then you'll find all these nice things. Okay. Any questions? Yo, uh, does it work for Sent6? It does. Um, Last time I tried it, uh, failed in the dependencies. So I don't think so because Sent6 is from the Stone Age and it has Python yeah. zero minus point whatever. It's <laughs> yeah, it's, it's pretty old and I know from, well, so in the community a lot of people in this audience probably work in, it's required though, so 
Yeah, um, I mean, um, you know, it's, it's it, like the, the, the further you go back in time, the harder it gets to support stuff. Right. I think if you manually compile Python uh, 2.7 to bootstrap, then you can probably do it. Um, so if you can do that, then maybe. But, I, you know, see, there you go. Chris, Chris knows so how to do that. I already um, have it installed in Sense6. I just wanted to make that process easier in the future. So, uh, OK, I'm yeah. going to give a general answer to that, which is it's very hard to, um, like, to maintain all these distros, et cetera. So I get people asking me about FreeBSD, et cetera. Um, I, I'd love for PyBombs to work on all of those. Now, conceptually, it should. There's no reason why not. Um, I can't do it myself. So um, if you're a CentOS 6 guy and you know how to you know, do these things, and maybe there's a couple of patches we need to do to make it, our code Python 2.6 compatible, I'll gladly accept those if they don't break anything else. Um, I, then we'll get CentOS 6 knocked out, and the same for FreeBSD. Like, I, I, I don't know why FreeBSD wouldn't work. Um, you just you know, set your def default compiler to Clang. PyBombs should be able to pick that up. Um, but it requires someone willing to sit down and then make it work. So CentOS 7 even was difficult to get running at first. Yeah, was, I've built it for that as well. Well, you the guy who had the million issues on, on GitHub? Because uh, if you are, then I'm very happy for that. Don't they, know. I might have reached out or I might have just went to I, You would have known. There was some guy. I hope he's here. Like, thanks a lot. Uh, and I'm not, not being sarcastic here. Like, <laughs> I posted about 50 GitHub issues, and we got through all of them. And CentOS 7 is now working. And that's, that, I can offer yeah, the that's same. That's kind of cool, though, because, yeah, last time I built it, I tried to build it. I don't think it was working on 7 either. And I ended up just going and doing it by hand and nope. uh, installing the dependencies by hand, which. 7, sucks. definitely fine. 6, definitely not. Cool. But definitely not impossible. OK. I think I, I'm running out of time here. Thanks a lot, guys.